before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Chapter 17 These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Chapter 18 When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. 
Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom, that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber.
Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. For the second time for you, for a second group, combined service, I say, Happy 2020 for everyone in Jesus' name. 2020 happiness. 2020 honor. 2020 honesty. 2020 heavenly mindedness. 2020 holiness for everyone. And I pray that this year will be a glorious year. For me, I said for me, 2020 hope and honor for everyone in Jesus' name. Appear this year than ever before. Lifted high this year than ever before. Making progress this year than ever before. To be done. You realize it. Great 2020 achievement in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, we thank you for this, our combined service, covenant service, for everyone here, and for those who are in different places of worship, who are connected with us, deep alive, throughout Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. We're asking, Lord, that today, you perfect everything concerning everyone in Jesus' name. No flabby part of our life. No fainting part of our life. And nothing of weakness in Jesus' name. Give us backbone and strength to stand. Stand in the way of God. Stand in the word of God. Stand in the will of God. There will be more perfection in every life this year than ever before in Jesus' name. Lord, grant the fulfillment of all your promises for all your people this very year in Jesus' name. We know you started from the beginning of the year. Do something new, something fresh, something great, something glorious. Something gracious for every life. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Another amen. Another 2020 amen. We're coming to Job chapter 22. And I'm reading from verses 2 and 3, Job chapter 22, verses 2 and 3. Can a man be profitable unto God? As see which is that is wise may be profitable to himself. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it gain to him, to the Almighty, that thou makest thy ways perfect? Eliphaz was asking a few questions, asking from Job, and he wanted Job to understand in his own way that whatever Job did was just for himself. Whatever Job became was just for himself. And he took those things in isolation. And he was asking Job, Job, now tell me, you talk about righteousness. You talk about wisdom. You talk about being righteous and perfect. Now tell me, Job, can a man be profitable unto God? A seed that is wise may be profitable to himself. And then he said, Do you think it's any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? He was saying, 
What do you think it means to God? Whether you are righteous or not. Is it any gain to him? What do you think God derives from your being perfect? Is it any gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? I would have wanted to talk to Eliphaz that when you are asking a question, it matters a lot who you direct your question to. It wasn't fear. Job was confused at this time. A lot of conflict in the heart of Job at this time. He couldn't see straight. He couldn't think straight. He couldn't analyze what was happening to him. So it was not right for a lifers to ask Job, is it of any profit to be perfect? <clears throat> and there are things you don't ask from some people. I wouldn't even advise a lifers to ask Solomon or to ask any man of his own acquaintance the question he was asking Job. I say, Eliphaz, have you heard about Abraham? Ask him, is it of any profit to God that a man be perfect? Have you heard about Noah? Ask him, is it all right? Is it of any profit for a man to be perfect? Ask Joseph. That's the man that went through all those things he went through, and yet he kept his way righteous, scriptural, and perfect. Ask Joseph, Eliphaz, you might hear sometimes about Daniel. If you were going to ask a question like this, is it of any gain, is it of any profit that the man be perfect as Daniel? I know you live far back in the Old Testament. If you could come to the New Testament and see John the Beloved, and you were to ask such a question, you'll have a better answer. I would even advise that you get near Paul the Apostle, and you ask the question you are asking, is it of any gain that a man be righteous, any profit to the Almighty that a man be found perfect? Let's think of, let's leave all those people alone and let's ask Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Whatever questions you have, especially at the time of your confusion, at the time of your conflict, you should be asking the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the final solution. He is the full solution. And he is the future solution. Any solution you want to any problem, any conflict, any question, any kind of misunderstanding, apprehension in your life, instead of asking Job, instead of asking all these other people, ask Jesus. He'll tell you the right answer. Come back uh, to Job chapter 22. Can a man be profitable unto God? Eliphaz, yes. That's why he made man. That's why with all the myriads, multiplied millions and trillions of angels in heaven, he decided he will make a man in his own image. Why? Because man will be profitable to him. Can a man be profitable unto God in life as yes? Why do you say yes? Because man is so precious. That the Almighty God sent His only begotten Son, that He will redeem man. If man were of no profit, how would God send His only begotten Son to redeem him? Can a man be profitable unto God in life as yes? That's why He left the result of Calvary. 
after Christ died on the cross of Calvary and he was buried and he rose the third day. He came to his own disciples. He said, you know what? You are profitable unto me. My death will not be known to people except you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Can a man be profitable unto God? Yes. God had a word. And he had a word to write to the whole of humanity. And he chose Moses to write Genesis to Deuteronomy. And then Joshua was written, and the Old Testament was written. All these Psalms were written, and the, Old, and the New Testament was written. He had a message. He couldn't pass the message through angels. He chose man. Can a man be profitable unto God? Yes. That's why Jesus went to prepare. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Are you not satisfied with all those millions and millions of angels? Are they not enough? I need the redeemed man. I need the righteous man. And I need the restored, renewed man to stay with me. Father, I will. That those you have given me will be with me where I am. That they may see my glory. And a man be profitable unto God as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. Yes, a life as man woman god's creature god's creation can be profitable unto god is it any pleasure to the almighty yes noah come for you have i found righteous in this generation i take pleasure in you enoch walked with god and it was not for god took him why the Lord had pleasure in him. I have found David to be a king, and I'm going to make him a king because he will fulfill all my pleasure. He found pleasure in him. Can a man, is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Yes. Is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. I want perfection. I love perfection. And Jesus said, be thou perfect, be ye perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Is it any gain to him? That thou makest thy ways perfect. Yes, let's give for him. Because that shows him that he sent the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, and sent him to this world to restore us to everything that were lost in the first Adam. And it's so it's a gain to him is pleasure for him that the sacrifice of his only begotten son perfects everything concerning us i'm looking at the message with you today on the new covenant revelation the new covenant revelation on profitable perfection the new Covenant revelation on profitable perfection. We're looking at uh, Job chapter 1. In Job chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 8. Job chapter 1, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. In our local language, we'll say that God was bragging on Job. God was happy. And God couldn't contain his joy, his happiness. He said, Satan, you've been moving around. Have you seen one man there? A man that is perfect. An upright man, one that feareth God and is true as evil. 
And then it says in verse 10, As thou not made an edge about him, he took so much pleasure in Job, that he made a hedge around him, and he bowed his house, and he bowed all that he has on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his son. He took pleasure in the man because he found him perfect. And he found him bent on doing what is right and holding on to his integrity. And his substance is increased in the land. God had pleasure. The new covenant revelation on profitable perfection. I'm looking at Psalm 64. In Psalm 64, we're reading from verse 2. Psalm 64. We're looking at verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Who wedge their tongue like a sword and bend their arrows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. That's what Elipas was doing. The Almighty God has said, Consider my servant Job. There's none like him on the earth. He is perfect. He hates evil. He embraces righteousness. And Elipas now came to shoot at the perfect. Suddenly, do they shoot at him and fear not? They encourage themselves. Those three friends of Job encourage themselves in an evil matter. The commune of laying snares privately, privately, they say, Who shall see them? Who shall see them? And God heard everything they said, everything they asked, everything they proposed, everything they raised up to condemn Job. And this is the question that is very important. For a child of God to understand, can a man be of any profit, of any gain to the Almighty God because he's righteous, because he's perfect? Yes. A thousand times, yes. The new covenant revelation of profitable perfection. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our sevenfold profit in the Savior's perfection. To start with, to know that the Savior is perfect, the Savior perfect in every ramification. Anything you think about is inner life, is private life, is public life, is relationship with the Father, every action of His hand, everything He did, everywhere He went. Everyone he touched, everything about the Savior, perfect. And we have profit in that Savior's perfection, our sevenfold profit in the Savior's perfection. Point number two, the settled profit in the saints' perfection. As we are redeemed, as we are saved, as we are cleansed, as we are washed. And the Lord draws us to himself. We have settled profit in the perfection of the saints. The saint himself has profit because he's perfect. All the people around him, they derive profit because he's perfect. And the people of future generation, after he has died, after that saint has gone to heaven, those other people in the future generations, they continue to derive a profit in that saint's perfection. The settled profit in the saint's perfection. Number three, 
the special prophet is scriptural perfection. The special prophet that we have, that you have, that I have, that the church has, the special prophet in scriptural perfection. The Lord perfect everything concerning you. Your home, your work, your ministry, everything that concerns you, your health, that amen is too weak. Everything concerning you, the Lord will perfect in Jesus' name. Perfect joy, perfect happiness, perfect health, perfect prosperity, perfect progress, a perfect relationship, perfect marriage, perfect family, just perfect. Somebody help me shout, perfect. Look at Psalm 138, Psalm 138. I'm reading from verse 8, Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect everything which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. Why don't you read that together? One, two, three, go. Okay, just the first line now until what concerns you. Say that again. Read it with faith. Take it as a prophecy. Take it as a promise that cannot fail. This year. I said this year, in the sight of all of us, we will see the goodness of the Lord in your life, in Jesus' name. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Number one now, our sevenfold prophet in the Savior's perfection. Our Savior the captain of our salvation, the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary, there is something about him that made the sacrifice to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2. We're reading from verse 9. It says, For we see Jesus, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should take should taste death for every man, for it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. He'll bring you to glory. To make the captain of their salvation, look at this, perfect through suffering. Perfect through suffering. He offered a perfect sacrifice. Look at chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 9. And being made perfect, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him is become the author of eternal salvation for every one of us for all that obey him what are the benefits we have what profits do we have uh, from uh, the savior's perfection number one you know this salvation we would have been lost without the Savior's perfection. But he lived a perfect life and he offered a perfect sacrifice so that he'll be qualified to give us salvation without that life. If he was guilty and we are guilty, 
If he was ungodly and we are ungodly, if he was sinful and we are sinful, there is no way he would have been able to grant us or give us salvation. The blind cannot lead the blind. The sinner cannot save the sinner. But a perfect Savior, a perfect Lord, that's why he was able to provide salvation for us. And today, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You didn't say amen to that one. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Whatever resolution he has, and whatever information he has, except this salvation comes from the Lord and gets to his heart, and he believes it, and he embraces it, and he has that salvation. There's no way he can get to heaven. And the perfection of the Savior grants us that salvation. It's salvation that saves us from sin. It's salvation that gives us the grace and the strength and the power to go and sin no more. May that profit of salvation be yours in Jesus' name. Sanctification. We're looking at um, Hebrews chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 5, we're reading from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Hold on. He became a perfect sacrifice. The Old Testament people were told, when you are bringing any sacrifice to the Lord, like the sin offering, your sacrifice must not have any blemish. It must not have any stain. It must not have any impurity. If it has any blame, any blemish, it should not be accepted. Jesus gave himself as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and that purifies us, sanctifies us, and makes us holy. If that sacrifice of Christ had been with blame, without perfection, it would not be accepted. But Christ offered a perfect sacrifice is the perfect lamb of God that takes away even the inbred sin that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church and in glorious sacrifice cannot make the church glorious. A sacrifice that has impurity cannot make the church pure. We derive the benefit and the profit of sanctification from the sacrifice of the Lord because he was perfect that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot because the sacrifice is spotless or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish that's why we're able to have sanctification from him. Not only that, we have the Holy Ghost baptism, power from on high. How could that be possible? Because Christ was perfect and he offered a perfect sacrifice. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Verse 32 and verse 33. This Jesus, as God restored, he didn't die a sinner. God had delight in him, raised him up. He lived a perfect life and spoke a perfect word and offered a perfect sacrifice and did everything as the Father des desired that he would do. And because he died in that state of perfection, Jesus, as God raised up, 
whereof we all are witnesses. Verse 33, therefore, because he died, offered a perfect sacrifice, and God raised him up, and he went to heaven to present a perfect blood for the atonement of all the sins of the believers. Therefore, being by the right hand of God and exalted, and having received of the Father, he couldn't have received of the Father. If he came here in the world, and he lived an imperfect life, an impure life, he would not have been acceptable to the Father. But the Father said, this is my beloved Son. He's done everything I commanded him to do. Perfect. Now he has received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. And he has shed forth this, which he now see and hear. Salvation is ours because our Savior is perfect. Sanctification is ours because our sanctifier is perfect. Holy Ghost baptism power from on high is ours because our baptizer is perfect. Look at Isaiah number four now, our healing and our health. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading from verses four and five. Isaiah chapter 53. We're reading from verse three. Of verse 4 and verse 5. Surely he has borne our grief. He has borne our guilt. If he had any guilt of his own, he wouldn't have the right or even the strength to bear our guilt. But because he was guileless and guiltless, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He did all that for us. He didn't have any transgression of his own, any sin of his own. He was perfect. He was bruised for iniquities. He didn't have any iniquity of his own. He was perfect. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes, with the stripes, with the stripes, we're healed. You are healed. Everything that needs to be done for you to be healed, everything has been done. And this day, he will touch you. This day, you will touch him. And the perfect offering of himself will give you perfect healing in Jesus' name. It will heal your broken heart. It will heal your ailing family. It will heal your sick children. It will heal you if you are sick. It will perfect your healing. You will be healed. You will be well. You will be healthy in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. And when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. I will. I will. Is your healing the will of Christ? I said, Is your healing the will of Christ? I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Any skin disease, anything that is destroying your health, you'll put forth a son today because, see, he just preached a perfect message. He never had anything like that before. In chapters 5, 6, and 7, he spoke not like the Pharisees. He preached the perfect message, and now he came, and the leper said, you're different from the Pharisees. You're different from the scribes. Look at me. I'm a leper. 
and if you will, you can cleanse me. And he touched him without asking any question. How did you get the leprosy? What happened to you? Where did you get this? And he was cleansed. You are cleansed in Jesus' name. Verse 5, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. You understand this? He was not an Israelite, a centurion. He was a foreigner. And he wasn't even asking for himself. He was asking for the servant of a foreigner. And you are not a foreigner in the kingdom of God. He did it for them. He'll do it for you. Yeah. I said he'll do it for you. Yeah. Because that's perfection. That's perfection. His power is perfect. His willingness is perfect. Everything concerning him is perfect. He said, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus did not have to go home there. Even at a distance, at a distance where you are today, your healing will come. And Jesus says, I, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Because it's perfect, angels stand at attention for the perfect Savior, and heaven responds favorably to the word of the perfect Savior. All he needs to do is speak the word into your life, and this year will be a 2020 new year in Jesus' name. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. They cannot argue. Sickness will not argue with the perfect Christ. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. I tell you the same thing from Christ. Go thy way. Go to your house. Go to your place of work. Go into the new year. From this month, go to all the other months. It will be well with you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. When is your healing? Verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He is perfect. It will perfect everything concerning you. Number one, the profit of salvation. Number two, the profit of sanctification. Number three, the profit of baptism in the Holy Ghost. Number four, the promise and the benefit and the profit of healing. Number five, the benefit, the promise, the profit of answers to all your prayers. Answers to all your prayers. Answers to all your prayers. How many of your prayers will God answer? How many of your desires will God fulfill? How many of the promises you are claiming will be fulfilled in your life? It's a glorious year.
is a wonderful year. The Lord will do everything in your life in Jesus' name. Look at John. I'm looking at John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, any believer here this morning? I said any believer there this morning? Any doubter? Unbeliever? Where is the believer there? I say, where is the believer there? Look at this. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Surely, surely, I say unto you. I'm holding unto this one. I said, I'm holding unto this one. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. He did not fail, you will not fail. He was not denied, you will not be denied. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever, look at that, and whatsoever, see this, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at this, verse 14. If ye shall ask, tell me, if ye shall ask, shall teach. If ye shall ask, say it with confidence, anything in my name, I will do it. Actually, he will do all things well in your life. Yeah. Number six, what profit do we have in the Savior's perfection? All things. All things. What you found impossible in your natural ability. What you found impossible in the past years. Now, in this new year, all things. I said all things, you will love higher than you ever loved in the past years. You will sing and you will testify more than ever before in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this, all things. And you know, Elias was asking, you know, what's the profit? What's the gain? And what do you think is, you know, the joy of the Lord? Because you are righteous, because you are perfect, because our Savior was perfect. And he went to the cross and he offered a perfect sacrifice. Now, we have all the sevenfold benefits and profits in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 32. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. For how many people? I said, for how many people? For us all. For me. For me. The Father delivered the just for the unjust. The Father delivered the perfect for the imperfect. The Father delivered the pure for the impure. And he said, so that you will have what he had. He says, he will make him your substitute. He became what we were, that we might become what he is. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He says, how shall he not with him also, also freely? Give us, tell me. Freely give you, tell me. Freely give me all things. Freely give your family all things. Freely give every one of us, tell me, all things. That's the profit of the Savior's perfection. Now, in Second, Second Peter, chapter 1, Second Peter, chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. I have something. This new year, I have something. This new year, you have something. You must not cry like last year. You must not mourn like last year. 
You must not complain like last year. You must not pray like last year. You must not be wondering and wondering and tired like last year. This year, you have something. Tell the person by your side this year, I have something. All those negative things are gone. New things this year. New benefits this year. New profits this year. New answers to prayer this year. All things. All things. All things this year. Look at Second Peter chapter 1, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power, he has given us, tell me there. According as his divine power, he has given us, tell me, tell me. According as his divine power, he has given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lost. Everything coming from the world, you will escape. Everything coming from Satan, you will escape. Everything coming from a hidden enemy, locking in the private and shooting at the perfect, you are going to escape all those things in Jesus' name. What profit do we have as a result of the Savior's perfection? Number one, salvation. Number two, sanctification. Number three, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Number four, healing and health. Number five, answers to all your prayers. Number six, all things. Number seven, heaven. Number seven, heaven. You'll get there. Well, we'll get there. Your wife will get there. Your husband will get there. Your children will get there. His grace will help you. His strength will support you. Because of his perfection and because of his perfect sacrifice, heaven will be your Lord on the final day in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for who? Reserved in heaven for... Another person will not take your place. Noah built an ark. And all those people around him... When Noah preached righteousness, could have entered into the ark, but they were not ready. And God gave them space and time, many, many years, while he was building in the ark. Eventually, the time came that God said, Noah, enter into the ark. Your wife, enter into the ark. Your wife will not be missing in heaven. Your children enter into the ark. Your children will not be missing in heaven. And the wives of your children, let them enter in. All your in-laws, as you touch them with the gospel, and they respond to the gospel, they will not be found missing in heaven. And the Lord 
locked the door of the ark. But he said, all these empty spaces who are going to be there. He says, put the animals, put the birds, and put all those beasts of prey. And the beasts and the animal and the birds replace the people instead of their getting there. That's why I'm praying for you that nobody will take your place. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now we come to point number two. After we have seen the sevenfold prophet in his Savior's perfection, now we come to the settled prophet in the saint's perfection. In the saint's perfection now. A saint of God, cleansed by the blood, washed in the blood. What is the prophet for that saint of God? I'm coming to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. Look at that. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. What's the benefit of that? What's the profit in that? Chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous and perfect before me in this generation. Was the prophet? He escaped the judgment of God. You'll escape the judgment of God. As you make up your mind that this new year will be a year of righteousness, a year of holiness, a year of perfection, a year of purity. When the judgment comes upon the world, it will save you, rescue you, protect you, preserve you from every form of judgment in Jesus' name. Come to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. God wanted Abram to be perfect. Why? What's the profit in that? I've been following you for 24 years. I've been the best I could be. Now you are calling me to perfection. Why? What's the profit? Verse 2. And I will make a covenant between me and thee. You'll have a covenant with me. I'll give you promises you never knew. I'll give you answers of prayers you never knew. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. That's the profit. That's the benefit. Look at chapter 18. Chapter 18, verse, verse um, 17. Chapter 18 of Genesis. And I'm looking at uh, verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide? From Abraham, that thing which I do, God said, that's the benefit, that's the profit of perfection. In the saint's life, I will not hide anything. You know, there are people, they are Christians, they are believers. I will thank the Lord for them. But a lot of things happen in their lives. And they are ignorant. This one happened. That one happened. That one happened, everything is upside down. God said, the benefit and the profit of perfection that you come to the Lord and He cleanses you and He washes you is that whatever is going to happen, He will not hide anything from you. How do you like that? How do you like that? That anything going to happen? Before it happens, like, um, you know, Elisha will tell the king in Israel, don't go there, the enemy is there. Another day, don't go there, the enemy is there. And whatever God wants to do, he will tell you ahead of time. Wonderful. I said wonderful. 
That's the benefit that we receive as a result of perfection. We're coming to Second Kings chapter 20. We're coming to Second Kings chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 1. Second Kings chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. There are many people who are, you know, waiting for prophecies. And they're looking for prophecies. And there are people that are quick to give you cheap prophecy lying prophecy and then if they hear that you're weak or sick it's a little fever or it's a little pneumonia or it's a little whatever they quickly send a prophecy to you the lord said i should tell you that you are going to die and then they take that prophecy they abandon their bible they abandoned the 2020 uh, confirmation of blessing for them, and they abandoned the, re the revelation of the final solution in their lives, and they're carrying prophecies about, help me take care of my children, help me take care of my husband, help me take care of this and take care of that. What are you talking about? What's the problem with you? Because somebody sent a prophecy unto me and said, I will die, not this year. You will not die. You know, can I give you testimony? You are not ready. I went to one West African country some years ago. And this man, I was holding revival. In the morning, I will, you know, teach and counsel. In the evening, I will have revival and crusade. And this man came. And as the man came, he, you know, said, hey, Pastor, I have a problem. I said, what's your problem? And I was new in that country. I had not been going there upon at that time. And he said, hey, you know, somebody wrote um, a letter to me with red pen everything red introduction red everything red and then after that put a curse at the end everything in red letter when i got that letter and read that letter written in red it became mental everything was upside down and he didn't know what he was doing again and those people that wrote the letter with red or something they went to his house and carried everything away and uh, so I was uh, having a revival in that country. And he now came to me and said, look at the problem I have. I said, you know what? Go back home. I told him what to do. I said, do this, do this, do this. I didn't know him before. But I told him, once you do all that, come back in the evening. I'll pray for you. And he went and he did what I said. He didn't say the man does not know me. He said he say he's a Nigerian. He came to our country. He doesn't know anything about me. Of course I knew by the spirit of the Lord. And then he went home and did everything and came back in the evening. I said, can I pray for you now? He said, no. I said, but you said you wanted prayer. He said, when I did what you told me to do, I became totally well. <laughs> you are well. I said, you are well. You see, we need to understand that is it. You know, so a family got married, and after they got married, this another, so another situation now, solution has come in your life. This uh, person got married, and for days they couldn't perform. They couldn't do anything together. They tried, they read, they did this, they did everything, you know, and sh there was, there was no result. And so they decided, well, we'll go to the headquarters and go to Lagos. And we had Saturday workers meeting here at Bagada. When the old Bagada was here. And then, uh, if this happened in the old Bagada, greater things are going to happen in the new Bagada. <laughs> and uh, so, I finished the workers uh, meeting and I came out there and they said we're coming from far away place in the north and uh, we're married and we just got married all these days and weeks I've been doing everything we can do but we cannot relate together 
I said, that's all right. I said, come to the service tomorrow. After the service, you can come and see me. And he went back home, and lo and behold, everything went fine. Miracle happened. And the Lord settled everything. And then as they came on Sunday, I said, now, I didn't tell them I'm going to pray. I said, tell me your story. And the man said, everything is now fine. Can I announce to you and your family that everything is now fine? Come back, come back, come back now to Second Kings chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 2. Then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord. He did not accept the negative prophecy. You will not accept any negative prophecy in your life in Jesus' name. Being born again is not for nothing. Being sanctified is not for nothing. Living a righteous life, a holy life, a perfect life by the grace of God is not for nothing. There must be profit in your life. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. In truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again. Go and change that negative prophecy. That one is not for Ezekiah. That one is not for you. And tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Do you know God has heard your prayer? It's not for nothing. And Eliphaz was asking, can a man profit God? Can a man be a pleasure to God? Can a man be so happy? And God will be so happy with a man because he's perfect. Of course, yes. Ezekiel said, See the life I have lived. Are you going to deliver me to the wish and desire of my enemies? How can I die at this time? No, Ezekiel, you will not die. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up eh, to the house of the Lord, and I will add to thy days 15 years and I will add to thy days 15 years is perfection profitable I said is perfection profitable is righteousness profitable of course yes we are coming to some 18 some 18 I'm reading from verse 32 some 18 Verse 32, it is God that guardeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Maketh my way perfect. Some, somebody there has not seen the verse. It's very important. Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verse 32. Have you got it now? It is God that guardeth me with strength. No weakness for your life this year. And make it my way perfect. He'll make your way perfect in Jesus' name. Psalm 37. I'm reading from verse 37. Psalm 37, verse 37. It says, Mark the perfect man. This man in front of me, Mark the perfect man. The Lord will make you perfect. The sister, mark the perfect woman, and behold the upright, for the end of that man, the end of that woman is peace. There will be peace in your heart. There will be peace even between you and your so-called enemies. They run after you, then they will say, 
as we're running after him, the man is being prospered more and more. And the woman is being prospered more and more. And if we befriend him, we can even share part of his blessing. And the blessing of your life will spill over unto them in Jesus' name. Psalm 138, I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 138, reading from verse 8. The Lord will, not that he may, the Lord will, he will. I said he will. That thing that, that looks crooked now, the Lord will straighten it out. That thing that looks oppressive, the Lord will lift your body. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. What should I do? What should I do when things look upside down? When it appears, you know, all the blessings I have claimed, I've not seen the result of them. I just wake up in the morning. I say this morning, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I go to my place of work, and if, if there's any problem there, and I'm afraid, I'm not talking about myself. You know that pastor is not afraid, not afraid of anything. Am I afraid? Are you afraid? Like father, like son, like father, like daughter. Fear out of your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're going into an office and then it appears you are wondering what is going to happen. Just tell yourself, the Lord will perfect everything that concerns me. You're going to your in-laws and then they have been calling you and calling you and they are threatening. We'll take a daughter from you. We'll take a man from you. The Lord will perfect that which concerning me. You're going to your market and then as you are going, you say, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. You're going to sleep in the night and then there is a voice that saying, you know, maybe this will happen, this will happen. No, no negative thing can happen to you. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Read that again. One, two, three, go. He will do it. Twenty, twenty promise that cannot fail. He will do it in Jesus' name. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth for how long? The mercy of the Lord endureth in your life for how long? The mercy of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord endureth in your life forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. The Lord will not forsake you. The Lord will be with you. Look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from Daniel chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 4. Daniel chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 4. It tells us in Daniel chapter 6 verse 4. Then the, priest, the, priest, the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. That's you this year. For as much as he was faithful... Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we we'll find it against him concerning the law of his God. You know the story, I'm just reading it to you, that made them to plan to throw him into the lion's den. The lions of this world will not eat you up. No lion is so mighty and so wicked and so violent to eat you up your blood will be poison to their system yeah. look at verse 20 look at verse 20 when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice unto daniel and the king spake and said unto daniel "O daniel servant of the living god is thy god is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? What do you think? A perfect man, a righteous man, a faultless man, a blameless man. God must deliver you from all lions. 
Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. I will be glad for you. I will hear your story. I will hear your testimony. The king was glad for him. The people that hear about you this year, they'll be glad for you. I said they'll be glad for you. We will not hear your story and then put her finger in her mouth. How could that happen to him? How could that happen to her? No. Good story. Glad story. Cheerful story. Good testimony. The Lord confirm in your life in Jesus' name. The settled prophet of the saints' perfection. Look at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 17, verse 23. I am them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one that they, the believers, the disciples, may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Any prophet in perfection? Yes. The world will know that through our lives, if the Lord can perfect everything concerning us, and we have joy, and we have peace, and we have this kind of testimony, the world will believe that the Father has sent Jesus, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. What's the prophet in perfection? The Lord will love you exactly as he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me will be with me where I am. That's the prophet of, uh, of perfection. He'll make us perfect in one, perfect towards one another open to one another, living a life that is glorifying to God, and then he says that thou will allow them to be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. You'll behold the glory of the Lord, which thou hast given me, for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. Something good in your life. Settled prophet, in the saints' perfection. Point number three now, special prophet. Special prophet for scriptural perfection. Special prophet in scriptural perfection. You can be perfect. I said you can be perfect. You will be perfect. We're not talking of the perfection of angels, not perfection of angels, scriptural perfection. What's scriptural perfection? Spell that word perfection, P, power without pride. That's perfection, purity without pride. That's the perfection that is talking about proficiency without pride. You're proficient, you're powerful, you have a good position. You have prosperity. The blessings of the Lord, they gather around you, and yet there is no pride. Power without pride. E, endurance without entanglement. Endurance without entanglement. Whatever happens and whatever the world may do, it will not get to your soul. It will not get to your spirit. Even on your bare skin, it will not get your skin. You will hear the noise of the enemy, but it will not penetrate your heart. And so you endure without entanglement. That's perfection. That you carry yourself in a good way, and you smile it off, and you are glad, and you are cheerful. 
In all these things, I am more than a conqueror. Endurance without entanglement are restitution without reservation. God told Abimelech, that woman you have which is another man's wife. And if you don't make the restitution, you will die. And the man rose up and in the morning and without any reservation, without any regrets, he called Abraham and he said, that's your wife. I didn't know it was your wife. You didn't tell me it's your wife. The Lord has told me now, he had restitution without reservation. You are not, that's the perfect man. You mistakenly do something and you are not lack, lacking in saying, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was not right. Or oh, did I say that about, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Did I do that to you? How, how can I do that? I'm sorry about that. In your family, the word sorry will not be far away from your mouth. In your place of work, I'm sorry, that will not be far away from your mouth. You do something you shouldn't have done. Perfection is restitution without reservation. F is faith without fretting. Faith without fretting. I believe God. God is on the throne. God will take care of it. He has spoken good concerning me this year. And whatever happens, I know God is about to show His majesty. Faith without fretting. Equity without enmity. Equity. You are portion to people what belongs to them and what they should have. You don't have any grudge against anybody, no animosity against anybody, no enmity with anybody, equity. You are portion everything equally. That's your right. That's what you should have. And that's what I have extra. I can give this to you. Equity without enmity. See, there is cooperation without contention. Not that, okay, I'm going to obey, but I contain first. I argue first, and then I try to wriggle out of it. And when I say, okay, there's no way to wriggle out of it, all right, I agree, I will cooperate now. No, you know this is right, and you know this is good, and you know this is holy, you know this is godly. You cooperate with the people who are moving the kingdom of God forward without any contention. That's the perfection truthfulness without timidity. You're truthful. Do you know anything about this? If you do, yes I do. And uh, what can you say to this? The truth in your heart. You will not hide something black inside and then be speaking out something white. Truthfulness without timidity. If I say this, that's the truth. What if so, so hears, I'll tell him I have to tell the truth as a saint of God, as a child of God, as a servant of God. What if, uh, you know, my husband will say, how could you do that? Well, I still have to tell you the truth. I have to tell you the truth. I will not hide anything. Even people may frown and people may be surprised. How could that happen? How could this happen? Truthfulness without timidity, Integrity without insincerity. That's the perfection the Lord is talking about. You keep on to your integrity. You are like an integral figure. You're standing straight and you're standing firm and the wind of opposition or trial or temptation will not blow you down. You stand with your backbone firm. Integrity without insincerity. Obedience without omission. Obedience without omission. Everything you know to do, you do. Just do. That's just your life. That's the perfection. When there's obedience without omission, neighborliness without naughtiness. Neighborliness without naughtiness. You love your neighbor as yourself. You love your brother as yourself. You love your sister as yourself. You love everyone as yourself. And you're free, free from sin, free from evil, free from anything, planning something to do, to disturb, or to destroy, or to derail another person. Neighborliness without naughtiness. That's the perfection the Lord is expecting. That's the scriptural perfection. Thank God you can. I say thank God you can. Power without pride. Endurance without entanglement. 
Restitution without reservation. Faith without fretting. Equity without enmity. Cooperation without contention. Fit for truthfulness without timidity. Integrity without insincerity. Obedience without omission. Neighborliness without naughtiness. And you'll have special profit. I said you'll have special profit. You are going to be blessed. As you pray, you are going to be blessed. Beyond your prayer, you are going to be blessed. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. I'm looking at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 22. James chapter 1. Reading from verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Look at verse 25. But you soon look at into the perfect law of liberty and continuous therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man, where is the man? This woman, where is the woman? Shall be blessed in all his deeds. The Lord will bless you. I said the Lord will bless you. And the Lord is going to knock off the hand of Satan out of your life in Jesus name John I'm reading from chapter 14 John chapter 14 verse 30 John chapter 14 verse 30 herein hereafter I will not talk much with you the prince of this world cometh and he findeth nothing in me. You didn't say amen to that one. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, the prince of this world, the devil cometh. He will not find anything in you. Any of his property in you. Any of his sicknesses in you. Any of his indulgence with you. In First John chapter five, First John chapter five, First John chapter five, I'm reading from verse eighteen. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth me not, sage. Say that again. That the prophet, that the prophet is the is the special prophet of the children of God, of the saints of God, those who are scripturally perfect. First John chapter four verse four. First John chapter four verse four. Ye are God little children, and have overcome them. Do you know you are going to overcome every difficulty this year, every challenge this year? Every evil thing this year, you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, greater, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, look at now Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. Verses 2 and 3. Job 22. Verses 2 and 3. Can a man be profitable unto God? Tell me. As he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. Tell me. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Tell me. Is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42 verse 7. Job 42 verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee 
and against thy true friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore, take unto you now seven, even seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job. You'll be a servant of God. God will confess your name before the angels in heaven and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. My, and my servant Job shall pray for you. You will pray for your enemies. All the people that were looking down on you, belittling you, their profit, their blessing will depend upon your prayer. For him will I accept, him will I accept. It's profitable to be righteous and perfect. Lest I deal with you after your folly, uh, your enemies will become like foolish before you. In that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So, Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shohat and Sofa, the Terminite went and they did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. Congratulations, the Lord accepts you. He accepts your prayer. He accepts your consecration. He accepts your life. He is not regretting he created you or he saved you. Praise the Lord. The Lord has accepted you. Ah, look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Things have changed. Negative things have gone. The bitter water under the bridge has flowed away. Sweet water, new water, and new blessing has now come. Then, there, then came there unto him all his brethren, all those who are separated from you, they'll come back. And all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and they did eat bread with him in his house. God will build a good house for you. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord, they thought is the Lord, had brought upon him every man also gave him a piece of money, everyone an earring of gold, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. The Lord will bless your latter end. However high you are now, you'll go higher. For he had 14,000 sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she asses. He, uh, he had also seven sons and uh, three daughters. All the sons and the daughters he lost, the Lord gave uh, sons and daughters again. And the wife that was uh, saying, you know, cause God and die, new health came on the wife. And fertility came on the wife. Productivity came in the family. The Lord will touch you. The Lord will touch your wife. And new, new things will happen in your family in Jesus' name. And he called the name of the first Jemima. And the name of the second Kezia. And the name of the third Karen Hapuch. And all the land were no, in all the land, there were no women found so fair, so beautiful as uh, the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job an hundred and forty years, he started life all over again. You'll start life all over again. And he saw his sons, and his sons' sons, even to the fourth generation. And Job died being old 
I'm full of days, I'm full of blessing, I'm full of joy, I'm full of happiness, I'm full of profit, you'll be full of days. You'll be full of happiness. From this day forward, positive uh, progress in your life in Jesus' name. Is it profitable to be righteous? Is it profitable to be holy? Is it profitable to be perfect? Rise up and get your own profit. Rise up and get your own profit. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, now I know, now I know. The answer to that question, is it of any profit? The Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect Savior, is a perfect sanctifier, is a perfect baptizer, is a perfect healer. And because what the perfect Lord has done, look at the sevenfold profit that I have in the Savior. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. You will not go home empty-handed. If you are backsliding, tell him restoration is available. If you've been careless in your life, tell him he will restore you. And if it appears that things are upside down, from this very day, the Lord will brighten your life. He'll cleanse all the blood of the Lamb. He'll save you. He'll restore you. He'll sanctify you. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will heal your sick body. He will answer your prayer. He will give you all things. He'll prepare you for heaven. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Tell him he loves the righteous. He loves the godly. He loves the perfect. The perfect has no pride. The perfect has no entanglement. The perfect has no reservation. The perfect does not fret. The perfect does not keep enmity with anybody. The perfect is not contentious, not argumentative. The perfect is not timid. The perfect is not insincere. The perfect does not omit the word of God, the duty, the responsibility laid upon him. The perfect is not naughty. The perfect can be proficient without being proud. The perfect can endure without getting entangled with the world. The perfect does restitution without reservation, without regrets. The perfect has peace and is faithful without preaching. The perfect works with equity without enmity. The perfect cooperates, cooperates without contending, without allowing conflicts. The perfect is truthful without being timid. The perfect has integrity, no, no insincerity. The perfect demonstrates obedience 
without omission. They will not omit the weightier matters of the Word of God and only obey superficially. The perfect is a good neighbor, a loving neighbor. No naughtiness and great will be the blessings of the righteous. And it will perfect all things that concerns you. Present your life before the Lord. Let Him make this year 2020 a year of happiness, a year of harvest, a year of honor. A year of honesty, a year of humility, a year of holiness, a year of heavenly mindedness, setting your affections on things on high. And then will you have the sevenfold profit, the settled profit, the special profit, profitable to serve God, peace to serve the Lord. You'll have confidence before the throne of God. He will not forsake his own. He will not deny you before the angels of God in heaven. He will not throw your prayers to the rubbish bin. He will have pleasure in you. Love delight in you. Will cherish you and honor you. The promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. Make this a year of peace. Peace with your neighbors. Peace with everyone around you. 
no contention, no fighting, peace. Make it a year of purity. No impurity, no defilement. A year of purity. Make it a year of power. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life. No weakness. No timidity. No fear. A year of power. Make it a year of perseverance. Don't start something good and then drop it. Start another good thing and drop it. Start another good thing and drop it. A year of perseverance. A year of progress. Moving up. Doing the best you can in everything you lay your hands on. A year of progress. A year of proficiency. Whatever you are doing, do it better. Don't be the jack of all trade and master of none. Settle on something in a definite and be proficient in it. A year of proficiency. A year of perfection. Don't allow imperfection. Don't excuse imperfection. Don't cover up imperfection. Don't get used to imperfection. Just say that's the way I've always been doing it. Make it a new year. A year of perfection. Peace at every peace. Purity, let there be purity. Power, let there be power. Proficiency, improve on everything you are doing. Productivity, don't be fruitless. Perfection, don't indulge in imperfection. And you'll find Perfection profitable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 2020, Amen. Amen. I rejoice with you that this will be a really new 2020 year for you in Jesus' name. You believe? Yes. You accept? Yes. You know the prophets will be fulfilled in your life? Yes. Raise up those hands. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, because you have cleared all the confusion or any question out of the mind of all your children. And I'm asking, oh Lord, touch every life, even today in Jesus' name. Yes. All the imperfections of the past, impurities of the past, take everything away in Jesus' name. Search our feet on new paths of progress in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Victory over sin, confirm it in every life. Sanctification and purity, confirm it in every heart. 
the power of the Holy Ghost and do your people in Jesus' name. Healing, kill, hells. Do it in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone here, anyone, whatever the sickness may be. I pray, Lord, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus and the strives of Jesus will take every sickness away. Put testimony in every mouth. And Lord, energize and strengthen every weak one in Jesus' name. Restore the backslider. Let the light shine in their pathway. I'm asking, Lord, every prayer they have prayed according to your promise, answer all their prayers in Jesus' name. Testimony in every mouth. Joy in every life. Lord, for everyone without exception, you will do something new, something fresh, something great, something glorious, something unforgettable in every life in Jesus' name. Profit, profitability. They turn to the right, profit. Turn to the left, profit. They move forward, profit. In the family, profit. In their place of work, profit. In their spiritual life, profit. And you perfect everything concerning every child of yours in Jesus' name. Lord, there will be joy in every life. All the years of mourning and weeping and crying, all that is gone. The bitter water under the bridge, all that is gone. Every day, a miracle. Every week, a miracle. And every fellowship, a miracle. Do something new every day for every one of your children. Confirm it in every life, Lord. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.